Name a labor leader. Pretty tough these days. Those powerful, larger-than-life characters are all gone, including the biggest and certainly most controversial of them all, Jimmy Hoffa. Hoffa brought blue-collar workers into the middle class, but he also lived and died on what you could call the nasty side of the labor movement. 20 years ago, this Sunday, Jimmy Hoffa drove to a restaurant outside Detroit and vanished. Now two people want the world to know what really happened. They are not union members. They're much closer. <laughs> Remember the long, weary hours of the nights we spent on strike. Remember the armed guards. Be on guard that nobody destroys this union. This is the last picture that were taken of my dad about three or four days before he disappeared. My father loved life, he loved people, he loved what he did. James R. Hoffa, in life and in death, he was always large. You're all here taking pictures because you're getting paid, I hope, union wages. Always controversial. Which I doubt if most of you are. My father came up the hard way. I mean, he was from the school of hard knocks. To the government, he was a felon. But to the American worker, he was their own fearless voice. The only thing you get in this country what you are big enough to take. His power came from his union. He had a, a kind of a personality that lit up a room. And uh, a guy like that comes along once in a in hundred years. I will work for you. Hoffa took truckers, unionized the them, I can do. and made them kings of the road. In 10 years, tripling their wages. He truly believed that they were brothers. His daughter Barbara, today a judge in St. Louis, recalls her father's mission. Complete and absolute dedication to the principles of labor and to the Teamsters Union. But all too soon, everything would change. And today, the daughter is the one with the mission. I want to know what happened to my father. This is where his rise to power began the Detroit Wholesale Produce Market. Hallowed ground, hallowed ground right here. Hoffa's son, also named James, remembers the stories of his father, a boy off an Indiana farm who dropped out of high school, moved to Detroit, and went to work. This is what my father used to do. He used to unload these boxcars by hand. Hoffa was 18 years old. Tough talking and union loving, he took on his bosses. Now, a 54-year-old son finds himself on his own mission trying to clear his father's name. The Teamsters movement in Detroit began here on these docks where my father called the first strike, the famous strawberry strike, you know, where they had to shut the place down so he could get better wages and hours for the men. And they threatened the employer with letting the strawberries rot in the sun. The bosses backed down, and soon these produce workers would be unionized Teamsters. Jimmy Hoffa was on his way, but there was to be a partner. My mother was a laundry worker and uh, the laundry was on strike and she was picketing and the Teamsters came to see if they could help the laundry workers and uh, that's how they met. Hoffa raised his family and built his union and by 1957 the kid who called the strawberry strike was president of the Teamsters. I've always been proud of you daddy, I'm more proud of you tonight. But along the way Hoffa also made powerful enemies. Men who said his strength came from intimidation and corruption. I cannot recall what that paragraph you read means at this time. Mr. Hoffa, any, uh, just uh, beyond the powers of comprehension that you can't recall that. I mean, you just, it's not, a reasonable man cannot believe you when you say that you can't recall that. Bobby Kennedy's Justice Department would establish you the Get Hoffa Squad. Hoffa? Attorney General not Kennedy said Hoffa had ties to the mob. And in 1967, after years of allegations and investigations, Jimmy Hoffa would go to prison. And I saw tears in his eyes when he left for prison. Hoffa was sentenced to eight years for mail fraud and jury tampering. Hoffa! Hoffa! Was he a corrupt man, in your no, opinion? not at all. Not at all. Merry Christmas, Jim. Released in 1971, Jimmy Hoffa knew exactly what he wanted to do. There are those who will tell you that Hoffa is a racket man. Take his union Hoffa back. It was in July 1975, as he waged his fight for control of the Teamsters, that Jimmy Hoffa went to this Detroit area restaurant, parked his car, and was never seen again. According to his family, former Teamsters president Jimmy Hoffa is missing. Whereabouts of Jimmy Hoffa, still a mystery. But... 
James P. Hoffa said today he's given up all hope that his father... The it's clear that my father has been assassinated. Although it was 20 years ago, it remains perhaps the most notorious unsolved murder in American history. All the FBI will tell CBS is that the case remains open. All they'll send the family is a handful of heavily censored documents. I want the federal government to allow me to see the file and the disappearance of my father. Barbara Hoffa Krantzer continues to demand the FBI tell her what it knows. She's suing the government to release the information. His disappearance was worldwide news, and no one has ever been taken into a courtroom for this act. I just think that they're never going to prosecute anybody, and if the federal government or the FBI, as a matter of pride, cannot admit that they failed, I can't help it. I think the family has a right to know. And what happened to the Teamsters? Corruption got so bad that in 1992, an independent review board was established to help clean up and monitor the union. Let's talk about Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah. Was there anything about that man you admired? Not really. And this man, Ron Carroll, out of Queens, New York, was elected president of the Teamsters based on strong rank and file support and his promise to stamp out mob influence. When you ran in 1991, you ran on a campaign of reform. You vowed to clean up this union. In your mind, what was wrong with the Teamsters back then? The perception was before we took office that when you mentioned Teamster, it was mob, it was corruption, it was wrongdoing. And I think we've done a, a very good job of moving that forward. The Javits Center has been turned into United Nations for the mob. While Kerry there may have made some headway in the getting the mob out of the Teamsters, he has been unable to halt the union's freefall in attracting American workers. Membership is down. Union coffers drained. I inherited a financial nightmare. Since 1983, they had been overspending the amount of money they were taking in and dues income. You had nothing to do with this? Absolutely. That's all a lie. I mean, that's just stupid for him to say that. That's not true. And he knows it. And everybody else knows it, too. The finances of the union are in complete disarray. Uh, Ron Carey has taken us... Uh, the son of Jimmy the, Hoffa uh, is angry about the way he says Ron Carey is running the Teamsters. Angry that the union his father gave relevance to can no longer even offer its members strike benefits. Does the International have a strike fund? We do no. not now. It's going to be surprising to a lot of people that the Teamsters, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, does not have a strike fund. How do you explain that? It's difficult. Again, that's a problem, uh, but that's not a problem that I think should be laid at my doorstep. But it is not just the Teamsters finances that have been called into question. Uh, I'm prepared to answer any questions that you may have. The man at the helm, self-styled crusader Ron Carey, has found himself in the crossfire. The allegations? A past history of ties to the mob. Have you ever had any dealings with any organized crime organization? Absolutely not. Absolute nonsense. An investigation in 1994 cleared Kerry. No evidence was found to prove he had ties to the Mafia. But the story won't die, and rumors about Kerry's past, whether accurate or not, have created turmoil at the Teamsters. We gotta get this union back the way it was. Right. My father helped build this union. Proud to be a That's Teamster, proud and strong. And I'm not going to stand by and watch a handful of people destroy it. I'm not gonna let that happen. Let's go. So Jim Hoffa, labor lawyer, hey, teamster. teamster, husband and father of two, made a decision. Hey, He's running doing? for his father's old job. You know, you guys gotta give me some support. I think we can do it. You know, it isn't a job. You know, it's a personal commitment. It's almost a crusade. In Atlanta, Hoffa supporters turned out to voice support for the son of the union legend. I've listened to the man. The man's very intelligent. And I believe in his dad. His dad was a great labor man and heading south to Miami at a union local. Jim, you're gonna have the support of, I, you're gonna have the support of Florida. And back in the Detroit produce market, where Hoffa Jr. has spent time picketing alongside striking Teamsters. We got a good settlement, let's just keep working on it. Here, where it all started by a crate of strawberries, Jim Hoffa is treated like working man's royalty. All right, brother, good seeing you. Offering the magic of nostalgia come to life. Well, it's nice to see you. Did you come down to get some produce this morning? My brother has a lot of my dad's magnetism. Uh, when he moves through a room, he moves through it very much like my dad. 
I also must say that as my brother has gotten older... Jim, we're ready to go. Uh, everybody's out there waiting. Let's go. His voice is very much like my dad, and Let's when go. he's making speeches, I can sometimes close my eyes, and it's almost as if my dad is speaking. When I was a young man, at 10 years old, my father would take me for rides, and we would always stop at a fire barrel, and we would talk to the men who were on strike. Let us work together as a team. Let us ban United. We must have one union to fight the employer. Let's stop dividing this, Ron Carey. Let's yeah. fight yeah. Yeah. Jimmy Hoffa's son wants your job. Junior. He's never been elected to a shop steward's position. He's never been elected to any position in this union. So what's the qualifications? I'm the son of Jimmy Hoffa? What does that mean? For 26 years, I've been helping Teamsters, I've been negotiating contracts, I've been putting people back to work, I've been arbitrating cases, I've been working with labor unions, I am qualified. The members do not want to go back to the weakness and corruption of the past. You're talking about the mob? You're saying he has connections to the mob? I didn't say he has connections to the mob, but I think that's what moves back in. Do you have any ties with organized crime? No. Never? No. Remember one thing, that I believe the mob killed my father. I will be an enemy of the mob, and I will keep the mob out of our union. In the Detroit Teamster local where Jim Hoffa works, a missing father still manages to look over his son. This is my father's old office here. As he prepares himself to somehow recapture history, come the Teamster election in the fall of 1996. Be on guard that nobody destroys this union. You know, there's something that we say, that if you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk. I am very excited about my brother's candidacy. And if my dad somewhere knows about it, my dad would be very excited and very proud. Of course, he was, he, if he was here, nobody would be able to take his place. But This is a hell of a local. 